Humans use tools to do things. If you give humans a new kind of tool that can do things that you couldn't otherwise do, imagine the possibilities. Imagine the possibilities. Introducing Macintosh. It does all the things you'd expect a personal computer to do. It does a lot of things you wouldn't expect a personal computer to do. And it does some things no other computer has ever done before. There are literally tens of thousands of some of the brightest people in the world today trying to build these machines and understand them. And I'm going to tell you why. This quote is from a respectable scientist, in fact, one of the founders of this field, that may, be a little bit, may look a little strange to you who don't follow theoretical physics, but there is a very clear prediction that our most successful theory of nature makes, and that is that there are an enormous number, mind-bogglingly large number, of parallel realities, as real as this one, that have different consistent histories. But science has reached the point now where we can build machines that exploit those other worlds. And this analogy with flight, I think, is an interesting one. So a horse can beat, or could, beat the uh, initial flight of the, the Wright brothers' flight in speed. But a plane is not a faster horse. A plane is a different kind of machine. The plane takes advantage of another, thing, another resource that nature gives us, this third dimension, in order to do something that matters to people better that you could do with any horse. It doesn't matter how fast you make a horse, it will never fly. So you may think, well, this is all fine and dandy, but is, aren't these things in the realm of theory and speculation kind of in the same regime as um, other futuristic things you may have heard of which may be allowed by the laws of physics but aren't here yet? That's not true. There are, in fact, many of these machines deployed now in openly available research centers following the model that was used to introduce supercomputers to the world. They're too big and ornery and difficult to operate to put in your home. These machines that supposedly can do this wild stuff, let's forget about how they work, if you could build one, could solve problems that you could never, ever solve with any computer of the sort that we built. If you took every single atom of silicon in the world and made the most sophisticated conventional Intel-style processor that you could build, there are problems we know of that I could write down on a sheet of paper that you could never, ever, ever solve with that thing. That you could with this kind of machine. And that thing is like flight. It gives these computers access to these new resources, maybe you could call them parallel universes. Because what they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans. And that's, can we build machines like us? Beautiful new computational idea in the service of trying to make intelligent machines. In quantum mechanics, there's this concept that an, a, a, a thing can exist in two states which are mutually exclusive at the same time, quote unquote. And so I'm using those words because the English language was developed before we had concepts to describe what these things actually are doing. But I'm going to give you a, a, a roundabout way of understanding this. Imagine that there really are parallel universes out there, and now imagine you have two that are exactly identical in every respect, all the way out to the horizon as far as we can see, down to the last little atomic detail of every single thing with only one difference. 
And that's the value of a little thing called a qubit on this chip. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours to make an effect in our world. Now, this may sound very odd to you and bizarre, and in fact, I am using language that a normal theoretical physicist probably wouldn't use, but this is, what I'm telling you is absolutely correct and in line with the way that these things actually work. As an aside, I just wanted to say that at least in the, in the Valley, Silicon Valley, and maybe in the United States in general, there's a very deep feeling of unease about the way technology has been developing. Because we have all of these vast array of very smart people, and what they're doing is crap. They're building things that cannot last. They're building things that are not important. This is a little bit of a controversial point of view, but I believe it. All right, so now I'm getting into the last part of my talk where I'm gonna make some predictions, some dangerous predictions. So here's my first prediction. I'm going to predict that by five years, NASA will have found an Earth-like uh, planet with Earth-like atmosphere and water on it, and serious people will start discussing how we get there. My second prediction is that this business of parallel universes is going to turn out to be very important. This picture that I've got under here is, is what's called a gravitational lens. When Einstein proposed his general theory of relativity, it came with a bunch of experiments that you could use to test it. And one of them was that if there was a point of light very far away in a galaxy in the middle, that galaxy should bend the light and you should see a ring. And this was eventually observed. And I think what's going to happen is somebody is going to come up with an experiment to test this reality of these things. And we're going to be able to do so. My third prediction that I'm going to end on is the most important of all. I believe that humanity is on the cusp of the most important technological, societal uh, revelation, revolution that's ever occurred. And that's when we got to the point where the machines that we build outpace us in every respect. I don't mean that they're better calculators. I don't mean that they're better at searching. I mean everything. Impressive machines.